Okay guys, uh, we're down at Greg's place and uh, as you can hear I've got the generator screaming away in the background here. And what we're actually doing, if we're going to work out the frequencies and so forth the generator generates on the uh, RF noise, and we'll design a filter. Uh, this filter um, will be for club members to um, get a copy of if they want and build one themselves. And uh, I think it's a really good project to build up a, a proper filter for the generator. And uh, you'll be surprised really how easy it is to build one. Okay, there's the inductor coil, measuring the AC coming out on the lead. It's going to the soldering iron just for a bit of a load. And uh, resistor on there, as you can see. And I think as we can see, there's lots and lots of noise coming out of it. Okay, hi guys. Um, I took this King's generator away uh, camping the other week and um, used my normal um, RFI filters on it, uh, which I normally use on my old generator. And uh, I found that this thing was producing that much electrical noise and interference in my radio. I um, tested it out, and uh, that's the other bit of tape that you'll see in a minute. And uh, we worked out that it's radiating all over the joint from all sorts of uh, bad design flaws in the uh, unit itself. And um, it, it could raise serious questions of whether or not it meets the uh, regulations or not. Um, I don't know, but uh, it, it uh, needs a fair bit of work done to it. So what I've decided to do is that I'm going to sit down here today and um, I'll slowly pull it to pieces and um, show you the faults that I found in it and uh, I'll show you the cures that I'm going to make for these faults. Uh, I don't guarantee to be able to quieten it right down, but, uh, you know, S9 to S10, you know, 12 sort of thing is just uh, unworkable for HF radio. So if you're using the 737 network or, you know, you use an amateur radio like I do when you're out in the bush, and you're finding that the generator's just wiping out everything, you can't hear anything, this may be a solution for you. Um, it's not particularly expensive, it's just a lot of very fiddly mucking around stuff. And um, it's fairly easy. Um, I'll, I'll be putting a number of these ferrites, the different types of ferrites through it, uh, ferrite rods. These are little ferrites for the leads to go through, and I bought some other little ferrites to, to, to put on the leads. Um, I've also bought these uh, these caps here, and um, I'll put them up in the description. I can't read them without my blessed glasses on. And uh, I'll be putting these in too to help to filter it down a bit. I'm going to have to add some more wire to it because the length of the wires inside are not long enough for me to wind around around in a, in a coil around these uh, ferrites. So I'll have to extend the wire. Now, be careful. Make sure you're using 240 volt insulation wire. Don't just use standard ACE, um, 12 volt wire on 240 volts because um, you will get a belt out of it. And uh, that's a bit stupid anyway, no need to do it. Just make sure you're using the right rating of wire and you make sure that um, you safely secure everything because don't forget, this has got a little engine in it and it vibrates. The vibration makes things rattle things rattling will wear holes through cables and they will um, break uh, solder joints and so forth off. So be extra careful and um, I just thought I'd show you the first fault that I found in it and uh, this is the first fault and uh, oh, I didn't bring a thing for the screws. Oh well, I'll do that in a minute.
Okay guys, now this is the first problem. As you can see, this is the ignition coil with the spark in it. And um, as you can see, there's no, no insulation or ferrites on this rod to stop it uh, radiating back up the wires into the circuit. And if you look at the inside of the plastic cover, it's plastic, it's not metal. This should have a metal RF shield on it, a wire shield or, or some form of metallic shield. Um, that shield should be on there and then connected to the earth. So I will be making a piece of aluminium to fit on here or something. I'll, I'll brew something up and, and put it on there. And uh, I'll run an earth wire from it to the common earth on the unit and uh, that'll help to shield um, any noise coming out of this, RF noise coming out of this unit. So away we go. We shall now start working on the unit and um, you're going to find that I'll be fiddling around a lot here, turning things on and off, it'll drive you mad. But uh, that's the way it's going to have to be, I'm sorry to say, but uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. So there you are guys, I've put two of those little ferrites on each lead, and uh, misfortunately I forgot to put the shrink on on the first one, but it doesn't matter. The shrink on is holding it in place, and it's a much neater way to do it. So okay guys, now, I've already changed the earth screw on this. It had a, a lousy little screw in there, so I made it up like this so that when I've got it in the field, I can push the plug in here, and I've got a uh, three meter, a three feet long um, brass stake I'd knock into the ground, and uh, that's my earth stake. Now, this is what I found the problem. The problem with this unit is, and um, I think uh, anybody that knows anything about electronics. Um, gets a bit of a shock when you see this. I'm not going to say they're bad generators, they're not a bad little generator for what they are, for the cost of them, but I'm, this is what I'm not impressed with. Uh, it's just, just not good enough as far as I'm concerned. And uh, maybe that's just me being a, fan, a, 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 a an extremely grumpy old bugger that likes things right. Or not, I don't know. Okay, so there's the panel here, a standard panel for these things, right? When you take it off, the only bit of shielding is that bit of metal there. That that bit of, that bit of metal there is the shielding. Apart from that, uh, this this unit virtually has no shielding whatsoever. Um, we can get this off. I've had it off. it off. Right, there's that off now. Okay, now, as you can see, very, very simple. The, the, this is the, the circuit board for the whole unit. This caps the whole up. Anyway, these coils and that are all to do the AC stuff. I found it very, very, very annoying. There's virtually no shielding over these. There should be a shielding uh, case over this to, to stop the RF leaking out. Now, when we had it apart the other day, uh, we had a look at it, and we actually sat down and played around with it a bit. I popped these two, this this is the AC output, I actually popped these leads off out of the plug here. And we just put two ferrites on them, and uh, it, it, it made a, a couple of dB difference, or S point difference on the uh, noise. So I decided what I will do is I'll pull it to pieces today, and um, I'm going to do a little bit better than just a one pass through a couple of ferrites. I'll, I'll cut these leads, I'll extend them, and um, by doing that, then I will actually have enough to wind around two or three times through the ferrites. And um, we don't need to go into all the guff about what ferrites do, but the more passes you get, the greater the, greater the um, noise uh, killing uh, features you get. The, the, in other words, the more times you go through, the better it is. Although there is a problem if you go uh, too many times in one direction, you get all sorts of problems. But that's not what we're looking at here. This is the problem we're looking at, and this is what we're going to fix. And um, I don't know what the outcome's going to be. <laughs> I really don't know what it's going to be. But um, we'll find out. Uh, when we get there. And of course, as usual, I brought my glasses to see what I'm doing and I forgot to bring a small screwdriver to pop these little plugs out. These little plugs have got pins on them which have got a little, uh, little uh, thing that bends out on them. All you have to do is just push that back and you can pull these plugs off and then you can separate the leads and you can actually work on them. 
uh, you don't necessarily have to cut these leads to do things, but uh, I forgot to bring my little screwdriver, so I shall be back when I have all this apart. Okay guys, as you can see, I've put the ferrites on these two leads coming out, this is the AC positive and negative lead. And uh, I've got three turns through these ferrites, small ferrites, and uh, that should knock it down a reasonable amount coming out of the coils in there. Uh, a lot more to do yet, but uh, we're getting there slowly. Okay guys, as you, can, as you can see here, I've actually put three ferrites on these leads down down here, these little ferrites, and um, I'll put shrink on, on them just to hold them in the right place, I've already done the other lead. And uh, hopefully, hopefully with these units, um, hopefully this quietens it down a bit. Um, if it doesn't, I'm going to have to look further. But uh, there's ferrite up here, three turns on each one. There's an extra one there. I don't have another one of these little clip-on ones. It's fortunately, and um, we'll set this up and we'll see how we go. I've also put a capacitor on these on the um, 12 volt system which fluxes a bit and um, I'm not really impressed with the quality of the 12 volt in it either. But uh, that's, that's another story for another day. Okay guys, uh, as you can see, I've got this metal shield here which uh, I'll glue inside the, uh, the, the side case. I'll do the same on the other side and that'll help to shield it a bit more. Um, it'll be hooked onto the earth so that it'll all be earthed and uh, It'll actually help. Um, this is the filter. I'll do another thing on the filter, which I've got. And um, we'll um, show you how it all works when we're finished. Okay, hi guys. And um, I've virtually finished the generator now. And uh, what I thought I'd do is I'll pull it apart here. I'll just show you the modifications I've done to it. Now it's virtually filtered out all the uh, radio frequency interference and um, what it is is it's a, a mixture of these type of ferrites and uh, I'll do a close-up of these and uh, these ferrites I've got wires wrapped around inside the ferrites and um, I also used not this one I used a bigger one but it's the yellow and white one and uh, that particular ferrite is very very good for low frequencies and uh, as I, I like playing around at 80 meters um, it is a low frequency so therefore the uh, uh, I need more filtration down there so and the other little guy is this guy here which I'll show you a close-up photograph of it all up it's cost me about thirty dollars to uh, quieten the generator down and um, well worthwhile so start off on the way in i put a new earth connector on it which is easier to push a pin in which has got the earth bar on it and uh, inside here i'll show you what we've done so far and um, i don't think you have to be einstein to work out how to do a lot of this stuff uh, just be careful uh, make sure you don't leave any uh, wires exposed and uh, I wouldn't recommend you doing it unless you know what you're doing to start off with but uh, it's a fairly uh, cheap fix for the radio, uh, TVs etc. I mean it won't stop spikes but it will stop the, um, the RF noise. Okay now I'll zoom in in a sec and I'll show you exactly but uh, there's the bigger ferrite I put in here and uh, how many turns? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns. Uh, that was the original ferrite that was in the radio, in the uh, generator, that's all they had in there, and uh, that only has uh, two turns, two, two times through. I've added these two up here, which is these, these guys here, these, these smaller ones. They're up there now, they're, they've got the wire going through them three times each. Down on the bottom end of it, I've actually got some small ferrites on the leads going to the plugs, and um, I've got one of those uh, caps across the, 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 the power point itself. There's also a capacitor in here, which I put in here, which is uh, basically hooked up to the 12 volt to try to quieten it down. And around on the side here, where the ignition coil is, I put a couple of small ferrites on the leads. I cut the leads and slid the two ferrites on. 
and then um, solder them back together again with shrink line and so forth so that, that stops any pulses going back from the coil and then on the side of the, the generator here I put a wire mesh, an aluminium wire mesh I glued it in the, the, um, the um, plastic container I'll do the same on this side both those meshes have a little um, little wire across to this common earth that's in the unit and that's virtually how I've fixed it up now it does make it a lot quieter believe me it really is a lot electrically quieter and um, of course we won't know how good it is until I get out in the bush somewhere where there's no background interference or no background noise which there always is around the, the suburban area well admittedly I live in the mountains a bit away from everybody but uh, there's still people around me and uh, they're always, all their electronic switch modes and all that rubbish are always making noise so anyway I'll give you a close up and uh, then I'm going to go for screw this back together again and uh, if you want any questions or anything else just ask me I'll, um, I'm quite happy to list the, the, plant, the parts or anything else that you need um, where to get them, I got my stuff mostly at JCAR but I am a bit of a, um, a hoarder in the old age and uh, m most of these ferrites that are like these shape, these small ones they, they've come from computer leads, old computers and so forth I don't um, throw the lead away, I cut the lead out and pull the ferrites out and put them in the drawer and keep them because I'm a mean old bugger, it's cheaper than buying them, they're only a few cents each <laughs> but uh, it's typical, it's uh, typical me but, uh, it's good fun. It's good fun recycling a lot of this stuff. Good fun mucking around with it and getting it to work. Okay. Okay, guys, now we're on the close bit. And uh, as you can see, that's those ferrites, there's, there's two of them, there's one on the positive, one on the negative lead. I had to extend the leads. I know that's a clear cover there, but it's, it's actually shrink on, but it's um, over the joints. I soldered everything, and I also have found another one of these little ferrites in the shed there, so I'll snip that on before I put this back together again. That's the, the ferrite that came on the unit, and that's all there was on it. I've added this one, which is a low-frequency ferrite, and um, I've added more on the leads down to the uh, switches. To the plugs and uh, that's virtually how I've done it now. It has made it better, it is worth the energy and um, I hope you have a bit of fun with these out in the bush and uh, talk it on HF. So if you're in the 737 network or you're on any other HF radio this this can be a cure for one of these or one of the cheap generators. Um, they, that does quite well, although with some of the expensive ones you still have to do this sort of thing to get rid of the noise. Okay, that's it from me now, and uh, I'll put this back together again. And uh, I'm looking forward to going up in the bush again and testing her out. That's it for me.